think that looks great. I think the main message I'm trying to get across is that you're way more capable than you think you are. The human spirit seems to be full of unlimited potential. At least in my own experience with myself, as I continue living, I find that the more I do, the more I realize that I'm capable of way more than I ever thought I was. You have potential, and I know it's scary to live up to it, but you can do it. You'll always surprise yourself and the world is a big mysterious place and it's better to experience it firsthand than to experience it through what other people are telling you big love dylan mcgaster over and out first off before we go any further dylan why are you wearing one glove because uh I decided it was a good idea to puncture my hand. Actually, I didn't decide it. I wasn't even thinking, and that's the problem. Long story really short, I found a dead sea turtle, and I cleaned the skull, and I was like, I want to mount that on my van because it looks badass. I pre-drilled the skull so that I wouldn't crack the skull, but I didn't pre-drill the hole into the van, so I was trying to screw it straight in, so it was slipping, so I was like, well, let me just pre-drill it. That red case that dropped, and, and then this happened. Oh, ow, fuck! I just punctured my hand. Can I kill it? That, like, definitely just went into that muscle. Let's grab the first aid kit. We've dressed the wound, and now... <laughs> we can continue on as the blue-handed bandit. <laughs> Rael, try to keep me from doing things that are mindlessly dumb. So that explains the glove. Uh, hands all better now. I've healed from that. Back to the main event, Gladys 2.0. If you're an absolute savage, you may remember what my van looked like whenever I first bought her. And if not, I bought a van. That's the van that I bought. Let me show you the features. Two captain chairs, neither of which swivel. A stereo that does not work. 65,000 miles. Fully functional wheelchair lift with two tie downs that I don't need, so that's gonna be sold. TV and a VCR of unknown functionality. A high top roof for optimal standing conditions. And a hell of a personality. I bought Gladys on June 6th of 2016. In August of 2016, I built out Gladys and created Gladys 1.0, baby. I've been making casual upgrades as I've been going like a light bar and Ablezill made me a little bookshelf in there which is dope. But recently I embarked on a five week adventure through Baja, California, Mexico, Baja Sur, all the way down to Cabo with Rael and I had to make some decent upgrades to Gladys to make sure that she was up for the challenge. Those being, I immediately bought a dirt bike because I mean, I. Isn't that what you would do? So then I had to figure out how to carry the dirt bike. And so then I had to mount a, what are those called, hitch. I had to put a hitch on Gladys. I went under the van and I started to install the hitch because it seemed pretty straightforward. But, as is everything, I ran into hurdles. 
this piece is the piece I'm trying to remove. I got the two bolts out from right there. That's what these bolts are. But this one, I can't get out. It keeps spinning. It's just, just spinning in place. So I had to take the van to a shop here in Yucca Valley and they punched out those bolts. I went to install the hitch and I was having some issues again because single person under there and it was also like not fitting. I took it back to them and they got it installed the hitch for me. I had this move the spare tire because of the dirt bike so I had to put that on top of my van. And then I put the trash roux up there, and that was all cool and fine, and was hanging out all snazzy-like. Every once in a while, it was falling in front of my rear backup camera, so that was a problem. And then also, people kept like yelling at me while I was driving. They're like, hey, you know that bag is like hanging off your van? And I was like, yeah. And so then I decided to just drill it and mount it straight into the door, so that's straight up drilled into my door. I bought a motorcycle rack so that I can carry the dirt bike down to Mexico. I stopped by the SWAT meet here in Joshua Tree, actually in Yucca Valley. If you're ever in the area, you gotta visit the SWAT meet. That's where I got that black box, and that's also where I got that first aid box, which is a beauty. So that black box kind of acts as my outdoor garage now, mounted on the back. A lot of people are afraid of like, drilling into their vehicle and cutting holes in their vehicle and I've never really understood that because my thought is as long as you seal it properly your ve you just mount stuff to your vehicle and maybe I mean let me know if you disagree with that but that's what I think what else did I do oh <laughs> so Gladys had a few cancer spots that I tried to take care of I'm not a doctor nor a mechanic nor a physician but I did clean the wound and try to get rid of any rust and dead areas. And Just scrubbed it up all real good. Then I sealed it with tire, nope. Sealed it with truck bed liner. I ended up doing that all the way around the bottom of Gladys. There was one main spot down here near the passenger side fender that was pretty significant that I ended up using gaff tape, screen from a window screen, and then more gaff tape, and then truck bed liner because I, <laughs> it works. I also added this, which you can't see, exterior light, which has been quite useful. Highly recommend exterior lighting. I mounted some Max tracks to the side of the van because, well, I mean, you are going to get stuck eventually. And so I did get stuck and they came in handy, but not as handy as I wish they would have because they didn't get me out. <sighs> I made a bed extension so that I'd no longer have to sleep diagonally. Also, since that last video, I had lumpy cushions. I fixed that a long time ago. Added, they're just three inch foam. So they're not like extremely comfortable, but they're, I mean, they're not bad. It's kind of like living in a van. <laughs> and finally, I recruited Rael to help me install the awning. And that was kind of a pain in the ass.
put it up, but the the roof of my van is like concave. Five out of six bolts are mounted. The other one is just filled with silicone, so it doesn't leak. But it's totally on there. I mean, it's been on there for like two or three months, and I haven't had any issues with it. Other things that I have added in addition are a domatic refrigerator. That thing, okay, that thing is great. It's huge, so I can hold like a gallon of whatever type of drink you want and a week's worth of food. One of the great things about that fridge is that it's got a monitor on it, so if your battery bank is low, it won't cycle, which is super nice because like then it's not just gonna destroy your battery bank. There's been a lot of other small improvements like mounting the yoga mat onto the wall with gear ties. I also added this little vision from Miguel and Gladys in La Paz. Her name is Gladys, so I was like, that's my van's name. You got the same name as my van. She stayed at an Airbnb in La Paz and they gave me that as a gift and it was like, woo! Added a shelf into the window, which was helpful. Basically made a bunch of small upgrades. But this is Gladys 2.0. Here are the specs. She's got 200 watts of solar going into a 200 amp hour battery bank, which powers a DC compressor fridge, as well as a thousand watt inverter, as well as two lights and a fan. That also charges camera gear during the day, and by night, she just runs the fan. She's got over 100,000 miles. Gladys has 102,300 miles. She gets about 15 miles to the gallon, give or take, depending on the roads and the fuel quality and how I'm driving. Gallon of propane, 12 gallons of fresh water, three gallons in a solar shower, which is totally arguable if it works or not. Common question I get is, Dylan, how did you make that dope ass floor? Well, this is how I made it. Basically, first you gotta get a giant map. So I cut a piece of plywood about yay big. I glued the map to the plywood with spray glue. And then I was gonna cut it with polyurethane like 80 times until it developed this like thick resin. But the plywood was warping and whenever I straightened it out, it created bubbles. I was like, no, but I'm already committed to this idea. So how am I gonna do it? So I found polycarbonate on Craigslist, like plexiglass, but I used Lexan. And so I got a piece of Lexan, cut it to size, screwed it down. And that's how you create that floor. Update, so Thursday, March 15th, I will be live streaming at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Come join the channel for that, and you can ask me whatever you want during that time, and I will answer it because you will have my full undivided attention for approximately an hour. Today, I also launched an online store, so you can go buy merch now for Florb, Floating Orb Productions, which is the company that I'm starting. And last of all, thank you to the patrons that support the channel, that think that my content is good enough to actually uh, support it. And so if you're interested in becoming a patron, go check out the Patreon page. There's all sorts of different perks that you can get. I really appreciate you guys that have like committed to support the channel. So to recap, live stream March 15th, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Go buy some merch. And if you wanna join the team, join on Patreon, so stay tuned because this is gonna be a dope year. Believe me, it will be. Have a great day.